Welcome to the Auto Vent 101. We're at the uh, Sim Lab at the Training Center. Firefighter Blum here. Uh, today we're talking about the new piece of equipment, the Auto Vent 3000. Uh, just to give you a little bit of an idea of how this training video is going to go, we're going to start off and just orient ourselves with the equipment. I'll go through each component of the equipment, how to set it up, and then we'll get into when utilizing it uh, during patient care, whether it's in cardiac arrest or respiratory arrest how to choose the proper settings for adult and pediatric. So I'll bring you guys over here. First, we'll take a look at the equipment. What we have here is the AutoVent 3000 1.5. What that 1.5 stands for is for your adult patients, the inspiratory time or the amount of time that it's going to disperse the tidal volume is over one and a half seconds. On the AutoVent 3000, there's an adult setting and a child setting. When placed on the child setting, the inspiratory time is going to change from 1.5 seconds to three quarters of a second. Also on the AutoVent 3000, you're gonna have your breaths per minute and your tidal volume. You're gonna notice two different colors on these dials. They're coordinated with the adult and child setting. So when you set your inspiratory time to adult versus child for adult, you're going to use the white numbers and for the child, you're going to use the orange numbers, okay? Now, when preparing your equipment, you're first going to start up with attaching your PEEP relief valve, okay? You can see there's a male and a female fitting. Male and a female, okay? You're gonna attach it so it's hand tight. Righty tighty, lefty loose use for your six month guys. Okay. And now we're gonna to attach to our O2, okay? When attaching to your O2, make sure you attach your tubing to your vent first. Then attach to your O2 source. When you're attaching to your O2 source, your oxygen has to be off. Don't have the regulator pressurized, okay? So just crack it, make sure it's off. When choosing a site to attach to your regular, you have to use the high pressure relief valve. You cannot attach it in the back of your rescue to your Christmas tree. It's that when you turn it, the liters per minute dial, even if you turned it all the way up to 25 liters per minute, Depending on the tidal volume that you select, it's not going to create enough pressure to generate that tidal volume. So utilize the O2 at the head of the stretcher. When utilizing the auto vent, it doesn't, it doesn't blow through the bottle. So it'll have more than enough O2 to last the duration of the transport. Attach to your regulator. And then obviously turn your O2 on. All right, so now I'm gonna talk about this PEEP relief valve, okay? This PEEP relief valve is probably the most important component of this whole auto vent. What it's designed to do is obviously disperse the tidal volume, but in the event that your patient develops, let's say a tension pneumo, or there's an occlusion in your ET tube, when it registers a PEEP of 55 centimeters of H2O, you're gonna have a visual as well as audible alarm, okay? This green knob will pop up and it will generate an alarm sound, okay? What that's telling you is there's too much pressure. So check your equipment, ensure your tube isn't flopped over or occluded, and once you do so, you won't see the audible and visual alarm anymore. Now, attaching to your patient into your ET tube, we have two pieces of equipment here that are gonna come stocked with your auto vent. Here you see the plastic uh, tubing. This is designed to be cleaned and reused. We're not, gonna dis we're not dispersing it with the intent for you to clean these and reuse these. We're gonna be handing out disposable components, okay? This is a one-time use. Once you use it for your patient, it goes in the garbage. We can order more through the training center. So you'll attach to your vent, okay? And this is going to attach to your ET tube by your 15 by 22 millimeter adapter, all right? 
when we get into the actual ventilation phase of the video, we're gonna break down the use of the rescue pod as well as the inline cap nozzle. So now that we know our PEEP relief valve works, we're gonna set our, our auto vent settings. We're gonna assume this is an adult patient. So right off the bat, we ensure that our inspiratory time valve is set to adult, okay? Indicating line, indicating line. The next is we wanna consider breaths per minute, okay? Obviously, uh, ventilation every five to six seconds is the recommendation by AHA, which is about 10 breaths per minute. So we're going to initially dial our auto vent to 10 breaths per minute. Remember, wide adult, wide adult, 10 breaths, okay? Now, obviously, we're going to consider our end tidal CO2 to, to change our ventilation, right, depending on what readings we get, but setting of 10 is a good place to start. All right, now we need to consider tidal volume. There's two considerations here, okay? If, in fact, our patient's in cardiac arrest, uh, AHA recommends a tidal volume for an adult patient to from four to 400 to 600 mLs, all right? On the adult setting, the lowest indicating line you'll see is at 600 mLs, and that's where we're going to start. So I have my tidal volume set to 600 mLs, okay? If my patient is not in cardiac arrest, okay, and they're in respiratory arrest, we're going to uh, estimate their weight, and it's six to eight mLs per kilo, okay? Six to eight mLs per kilo, all right? And based off of that, you're going to utilize the closest indicating line to your, to your estimated tidal volume, okay? Six, eight, 1,000, 1,200. Now, do note that in between these indicating lines, the pressure will change, okay? So if you were to set this indicating line somewhere between the six and 800 mark, you're somewhere around 700 mLs of tidal volume, all right? So let's just assume that our patient's in cardiac arrest. I'm going to set my tidal volume for 600 mLs, okay? All right, so now that we have a good understanding of our equipment, uh, we're gonna fast forward to now our, our patient is intubated. Okay, uh, at this point we've confirmed our tube placement and we're ready to switch the patient from bag valve mass ventilations to our auto vent. So it's already set up, it's already hooked up to O2. Before we attach to our patient, we have to ensure that our PEEP relief valve is, is working. So we're gonna assume this is an adult patient, okay? I'm gonna turn on my breast per minute and I'm gonna cover the valve. So by covering the valve, I'm generating too much peep, and what you can see is you have the visual as well as audible alarm. So my valve is working, I'm ready to attach to my patient. So I'm going to DC my BVM. Now in a cardiac arrest patient, all right, we want to utilize our rescue pod, okay? This has strong correlations. A lot of clinical studies have shown this is going to increase the chances of ROSC, okay? And when utilizing the rescue pod, remember, pod goes closest to our patient, okay? You don't have to turn the pod light on at this point because our auto vent is going to give the amount of breast permit that we request. From this point, we're gonna attach our end title. When connecting your peep relief valve, take the disposable tubing, attach, okay? And then you're going to attach to your inline. All right, so once it's attached, Obviously, you can see chest rise and fall uh, with each ventilation. Uh, the auto vent is sent for once again to 10 breaths per minute at 600 mLs of tidal volume for the adult patient. So it's giving an, an inspiratory time of one and a half seconds. Now, when utilizing the auto vent, uh, obviously the O2 is gonna be behind us. So find a place for your auto vent, whether it's next to the patient, on the side of the patient, okay? Wherever you, you feel it's comfortable. Uh, one issue that you may deal with is when you have the rescue pod attached, okay, and you lay down your peep relief valve, it may put too much pressure on your ET tube and actually occlude it, bend it so it creates a kink. When that happens, you'll be notified because your peep relief valve is going to give you that audible and that visual when alarm. When your peep relief valve has the audible and visual alarm, whether it's due to the ET tube being kinked or uh, tension pneumo or another pathology, the pressure actually comes out through the PEEP relief valve and it doesn't get dispersed to the patient. That's what will prevent uh, barrel trauma. So that's the whole purpose of your PEEP relief valve. 
All right, so call is over, right? We're going to DC or auto vent. We're at the hospital, hospital takes over. What do we do with our auto vent from here? Very, very simple. You're going to take your one time use tubing, you're going to throw it out, okay? Uh, take purple wipes, you can clean this whole unit with purple wipes, that's fine. Uh, but our recommendation is to just DC from your O2. And store the unit like this. So find a spot in your rescue, whether it's where your spare meds are or wherever you think is, is best. So when you pull out your unit, uh, it's already ready to go, all right? One last thing that we're going to end with is when utilizing uh, the auto vent with pediatrics. Uh, the setup is, is exactly the same. Obviously, we're going to turn our inspiratory time to the child setting, okay? So we're still gonna estimate the tidal volume off of the weight, six to, ml, six to eight mLs per kilo. Uh, the way to do your estimated weight is take out your hand heavy book, find the age, and then it gives you an approximate weight for you to, to do your calculations. Uh, if the patient is in cardiac arrest or in respiratory arrest, you can do your calculations, but remember, in pediatrics, it's really easy to see chest rise and fall. So we want the bare minimum of tidal volume just to see that chest go up. That's always a, a good source to rely on. Uh, but if you wanted to utilize the calculation, you can do that as well. Thank you.